In part A of the question, we are asked to determine the volume of a 20 kilogram lead mass that is at rest on the bottom of a pool. Now we have learned in this chapter that the density of the lead would equal its mass divided by its volume. We need to solve this equation for the volume. So we'll multiply both sides of the equation by V, which cancels it on the right hand side, and then we'll divide both sides by the density. Cancel it out on the left side so we can see that volume is simply equal to the mass divided by the density. Now we were given the mass directly in the question. It was 20 kilograms. The density of lead is a value that you would have to look up in a table of density values. And we have that table right here so we can see that lead has a density of 11.3 times 10 to the power of 3. So we're going to take the mass, which was the 20 kilograms, and then divide that by the density that we just noted. And that unit for density is kilograms per meter cubed. So we'll go ahead and divide this. And when we do so, we're going to get 0 0.00177. And we can see that the kilograms will cancel. That will leave us with a unit of meters cubed. So this would be the correct answer to part A of the question. To part B, we need to determine the buoyant force. And we have learned in this chapter that the buoyant force is the density of the fluid. In this case, that fluid is water, since the lead is at the bottom of a pool, multiplied by the volume of the object that is submerged, and then multiplied by g. Now again, the fluid is water, and we can see from our handy chart here that the density of water is 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed, or 1.00 times 10 to the power of 3 kilograms per meter cubed. Then you'll multiply that by the volume of the object which you just determined in part A of the question. And then multiply that by 9.8 meters per second squared. So when you punch this all into your calculator, you will see that the buoyant force is 17.3 newtons. In part C, we were asked to determine the lead's weight. And we've learned from previous chapters that the weight of an object is simply its mass times g. So all we need to do is take the mass that was given in the question, multiply that by g, and this will give us a weight of 196 newtons. So that's the correct answer to part c. Finally, in part d, we need the normal force that is acting on the lead weight. Now we've drawn a free body diagram right here showing three forces acting on this lead mass. We have the downward acting weight, which is also mg. We have the surface of the pool pushing up on the lead weight or the lead mass. That's the normal force. And then we have the buoyant force, which is the upward force produced by the fluid itself. And since this mass is at rest, we know that the upward forces must equal the magnitude of the downward forces. So in other words, we can say buoyant force plus normal force must equal mg. That would be the only way that the lead mass would remain at rest. And what we'll do is solve for the normal force. So we'll subtract the buoyant force from both sides. And we can see that the normal force is simply the weight minus the buoyant force. We determined the weight to be 196 newtons. And the buoyant force was the 17.3 newtons. So when we subtract these, we're going to get about 178.7 newtons. That would be the correct answer for part D.